Hi there, this is Kevin Patton with the AMP Student. And we want to spend just a few minutes looking at a mnemonic phrase that's going to help us remember the cranial foramina. So let's get started. Here is a skull that we're looking down into from a superior angle. And to get a better idea of exactly what we're looking at, let's look at the skull from the lateral perspective where we see that it has been sawn through on a transverse or horizontal plane so that we can remove the top of the cranium and look down into the floor of the cranium. So we just move the skull around and there's the view that we have right now. And uh, we can see that toward the top of the image would be the anatomical anterior direction and down toward the bottom of the image that we see here is the posterior direction. And then left and right is the same as the viewers left and right. And another thing I want to take a quick look at is the terminology itself. The first one is cranial. And here cranial refers to the cranial floor. That is the floor of the cranium, which is what you see when you look down into this opened up cranium. And then we're going to take a look at the foramina that we would find in the cranial floor. And so what about that term foramina? Well, in skeletal biology, foramina means holes. So these are holes for nerves and blood vessels and things like that. And each one of them is called a foramen or foramen. And uh, then we want to take a quick look at that term mnemonic. A lot of people are confused about what exactly that means. And all it means is relating to memory. So a mnemonic phrase is a phrase that helps us remember something. A mnemonic word or acronym is a word that helps us remember something. So mnemonic just means relating to memory. So we're going to propose a mnemonic phrase that's going to help us in finding those cranial foramina, in identifying them. So let's get started. And the first thing that we notice is there's a really big, huge hole in the floor of the cranium. And that is called the foramen magnum. And the name itself is a good mnemonic word because in Latin, it literally means big or even huge. And that is a big, huge hole, isn't it? That's where the uh, brainstem uh, you know, transitions into the spinal cord. And uh, so, yeah, it is big and it's right along the midline there. And so we don't really need to make that part of our mnemonic phrase because it's so easy to remember because of its name. Foramen magnum means hole that's large. But what about all these other little ones that seem to be scattered, you know, in a hodgepodge way, really, in the floor of the cranium? That's what we're going to need help remembering. So let's zoom in here and we can see foramen magnum uh, down toward the bottom of the image now that we've zoomed in. So we kind of have our, our bearings here. So let's get rid of that label and focus on these other smaller foramina, starting with the anterior most one. There's one that's kind of facing posteriorly, so we don't really see it you know, full on here, but we can kind of tell where it is in this angle, and that's the optic foramen, and it's named that because the optic nerve is going to be coming from the eye socket or orbit of the eye in the skull in heading uh, in toward the brain. So its name is somewhat helpful in, in remembering it. And then we have foramen rotundum, just posterior and a little bit lateral to that. And that name helps us remember it a little bit because rotund means rounded. And so it is a rounded foramen. So that's a, a little bit helpful. And then we have foramen ovale, which uh, ovale means oval. And so, yeah, that looks kind of oval, certainly not as round as foramen rotundum. So that's somewhat helpful. And then a little bit lateral and posterior to that is uh, foramen spinosum. And it's kind of hard to see in this particular specimen. If you look over to the mirror image over on the left, you can see it a little bit better. Um, and in many specimens, when you look at it closely, you'll see that there's kind of a little pointing, pointy thing sticking into the middle. Looks kind of like a little spine. So that's how it gets its name, uh, foramen spinosum. 
Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. So it's not always very helpful. And then uh, we kind of move back toward the, the midline again, more medial direction, and we see one called uh, foramen lacerum. And then um, going posterior again, we see the acoustic foramen, and that's where the acoustic nerve will uh, move into the uh, cranial cavity. And that one is a little hard to see. It's just like the optic foramen in that it's kind of at an angle, and so we're not looking at it full on. And then um, lastly, we have the jugular foramen, and that's where the jugular vein is going to exit the cranial cavity and go down into the neck. So there's a whole bunch of them, and they do seem to be kind of scattered all over the place. But if you use your imagination, you might be able to tell that they're kind of arranged in sort of like two diagonal rows. So let's get rid of the skull itself so we can focus on just where the holes are to kind of help us better picture in our mind's eye the fact that they do kind of form two diagonal rows. So there's the first row, the more anterior of the two rows, and then there's the second row, the more posterior of the two rows. And so, yeah, it's kind of two rows. So that's what we're going to keep in mind as we use the mnemonic phrase that we're going to develop here. So let's put the labels back in there because it's those names that we need to remember as well as their relative position to one another. And one way to create a mnemonic device would be to take the first letter of each term, which is kind of in boldface type here, and maybe make an acronym or a word out of it. And if we do that, we get Oros Lodge. <laughs> okay. Well, if that helps you, fine. And you can just turn off the video right now. But that doesn't help me much because it's hard to remember. It doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. It's not easy to remember. And what good is a mnemonic phrase, or in this case, a mnemonic word, if it's not easy to remember? That's the whole point of it. So we're not going to use that. Instead, we're going to take the first letter of each term and make a phrase out of it. And one that has worked well for me is a phrase that goes, old rotund owls spin lazily across jugs. And you'll notice that I've arranged the labels here sort of in those two diagonal rows, just like the, um, the uh, holes themselves are arranged in the skull. And along the bottom, you can see that there's a whole bunch of milk jugs set up there. And there's an old rotund owl spinning lazily across them. And yes, that's a really silly image to picture in your mind's eye. But it turns out that if you can picture an image, and the sillier the image is, the better, that's going to help us remember things even better than just remembering the phrase. So remembering the phrase itself is helpful, but remembering a visual image, a silly visual image that goes along with it, that's going to make it even easier to remember. So Old rotund owls spin lazily across jugs. That's our image. And the old represents optic. Rotund means rotundum. And we're starting to see that these words actually are more helpful than they first appear because rotund is really the first part of the term rotundum. And even owls, the OW is very similar to the OV of ovale. And spin, well, that's the whole first part of spinosum. Lazily, well, that first syllable, lays or las, is similar to lacerum, the first syllable, las, of lacerum. And then the second one, the first syllable again is very helpful. Ac in across is similar to ac in acoustic. And then lastly, that whole word, jugs, is very similar to the first syllable of jugular. So if this phrase helps you, great. If not, make up one of your own. And again, if it invokes or evokes a very silly image in your mind's eye, then that's going to make your mnemonic device even better. If you'd like more tips and tools for learning human anatomy and physiology, visit me at theapstudent.org.